Good afternoon. Hello. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome. So we're going to give it uh, another couple of minutes so that people can join. Uh, just so you know, my name is Bruno. Here with me, I have my colleague Javier Sanchez. Uh, and we'll be uh, conducting the session today. Just let's give it another couple of minutes for those who couldn't join yet. We're going to start precisely in four minutes now. Okay, so bear with us uh, and stay tuned because we're going to cover a lot of interesting aspects about turning Feedback Studio. Thanks for joining. So you can... Uh, uh, meanwhile, you can uh, introduce yourselves on the chat. Uh, we're going to have a little interaction going on with the session, uh, but uh, it's going to be very uh, instructive as well. So let me just go ahead and while we wait, uh, let's just uh, share our screen here. So I want you to in my screen there. So I'm assuming you, you get my screen right now. Perfect. So uh, let's wait for another couple of minutes before we start. So thanks for those of you who joined so far and uh, see you in a couple of minutes. Hello, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. So thank you uh, for joining us today. So officially starting this session, just uh, please allow me to introduce myself. So hello, Martha. Hello, Agnel. I guess, I guess that's how you pronounce your name. Uh, yeah, so uh, let me introduce myself. Good, good. I nailed it. Agnel, Leroy, Katrina. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. 
Uh, here we are today with Javier. I have my friend Javier Sanchez with me. He's uh, hailing straight from Mexico. So he's based in Monterey. I'm based in Brazil. It's a pleasure to introduce you to Turnitin Feedback Studio. So we're going to be covering the uh, basic aspects of uh, interpretation of the similarity report. We're going to talk about class creation. We're going to talk about um, red flags. So there are many interesting topics today. And we're going to discuss about a little bit about similarity versus plagiarism too. So there are many things that we can uh, talk about today. So welcome again. Uh, and without further ado, I would like to invite you to participate in this session. So I have a, uh, an activity, uh, a poll, so to say, so that, that you can interact. So it's called a mentee. Uh, and in this platform, you're able to interact with your uh, with the participants here. So we can all interact and have a, a great time together just for us to start uh, start this session in a good way. So uh, you can scan the QR code that you see on your screens. You can also go to menti.com and enter, enter the code you can see there, or you can take the easy route and just click on the link I just shared with you on the chat window, and it's going to take you straight to uh, the activity. Hello, Sharon. Welcome. Hello. Do Dodri, oh, I'm trying my bad. Dora G. Okay, you can you can tell me how to pronounce that. That will be great. But I try my best here, uh, not to not to destroy your your names. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so yeah, thank you thank you so much for participating in this activity. So let's move ahead. Um, first question is really simple. So I would like to know from you. Where are you joining us from today? So you can tell where you're from. You can tell your university. You're free to type whatever you want there. If you can type your country, your city, just let us know. Barbados, really nice. Interesting. We're, and we're expecting a lot of folks from the Caribbean today. So that's good. University of the West Indies, I'm assuming. I'm assuming you didn't have enough, uh, enough space left to, to type that, but that's ooey, right? To be just for, just uh, for short. Um, you in Mona, Jamaica, Cave Hill, Barbados. So a lot of people from UWE, that's really nice. Uh, living, nice. Uh, life, <laughs> I'm joining you, joining you from life, that's good. UWE, Jamaica, Sharon is saying here. Uh, uh, Dorji saying uh, saying here West Indies Open Campus adjunct instructor. That's good. So you're in the right place. Thank you for answering the poll. Moving ahead. So another question here. Uh, this is totally related to what we're going to discuss today. So I want to see your your perspective, your view on what's an acceptable percentage of similarity in your opinion. And of course, uh, in this case, there is the right answer. Um, uh, but don't worry if you got the wrong one, we're here to learn. But I see everyone's going the same place here. So uh, that's, that's interesting. Let's see if that's the right answer. <laughs> so uh, we might say zero, okay? Some, some people, there's actually one person that says zero. I, I wouldn't take any, any type of similarity, but we can discuss that, of course. Uh, I'm considering the right uh, answer here to be the the middle the, the middle column here. So it depends and may vary, right? We're going to talk about that. So don't worry for those of you who are not really convinced yet. We can talk about that. Ten percent, KDN put on the chat. That's that's uh, that's uh, interesting, and that's something we can debate, right? Okay. Notice there, it's there's a catch in this question. So I'm asking you now, instead of similarity, I'm asking you about plagiarism. So what's an acceptable percentage of per plagiarism in any given uh, paper, in any given uh, essay? So many people are going, uh, as opposed to the previous question, you see the answers are the same, but uh, the question is different now. So. Uh, uh, the plagiarism, many people consider uh, 
inacceptable, but there are still some people who says, okay, it may vary. And that's, that's interesting because of course, plagiarism can occur. And, uh, and the interesting thing here to, to consider is what we can do when we face situations of, of uh, plagiarism or that involve plagiarism, right? There are some actions that we can take. There are some measures that we can take institutionally speaking to maybe counter that or maybe uh, work on that so that students can benefit from this and learn from it. But really interesting perspectives here. So we're saying now for the time's sake that, um, so for the time being, zero percentage of plagiarism, but because uh, if, you, if you consider it uh, from a, an ethical perspective, plagiarism is not a good thing, right? Because you're taking responsibility or you're, you're giving credit to yourself for something that belongs to other people. So you're kind of, mm, you're kind of taking over some uh, person's production, right? So it's not 100% ethical, but we can discuss that. We're here to learn, as I said, so we have many interesting things to talk about that too. Moving forward, so I want to learn from you, and you can type there on your on your mentee. What are the most frequent areas of opportunity you face in your students' writing? Writing. So, uh, if you think there are areas of improvement, areas of opportunity that you want to develop, that you want to foster. So, for example, I want to uh, improve their understanding of of um, of manuals or or writing manuals, for example, or you might as well say, okay, I want to improve their level of understanding of um, academic integrity. Why not? So yeah, so just let just let us know in, in a few words, and I'm, I'm I'm assuming you're typing there. So what are, you, what are the most frequent areas of opportunity or areas that you think your students uh, maybe need to improve or things your students do that might not be acceptable that you want to act upon. So please, please let us know. Academic integrity, the ability to correctly use citations and paraphrase within academic essays. That's spot on. Paraphrases tend to be very, very controversial, right? Because uh, the difference between a, a paraphrase and, and uh, you know, just, uh, uh, plain substitution with synonyms or, you know, just not, uh, not altering the content and the, you know, just uh, manipulating the text, but not in a way that it changes the, the structure and represents the thought of the author. So that's really interesting. Correctly citing works, academic citing of literature, using citations, paraphrase and summary. Students need to adequately paraphrase and summarize information. They find this very difficult. That's I, I totally agree with that. That's that's what why I see you uh, mentioning that, and I I agree with you one hundred percent. And that's all over the world. I'm assuming in Mexico, Javier has something to say about paraphrases, and here in Brazil, where I live, uh, that's a point of concern, major point of concern. Upper seven, uh, so many uh, many people uh, nowadays are uh, concerned about this uh, manual appropriation. So the ability to do in-text citations using a, a specific manual, right? Uh, that's really interesting. Thanks guys. And I'm I have any other thoughts here, ability to, but most of you are, are talking about these um, procedural things, these things that involve uh, the understanding of manuals and academic integrity in a general way, right? So that's really good. So we're on the same page. Thanks, Thanks for all of you who have answered the, the poll. So moving further, now is the first, I promise, I'm, it's the last, uh, better saying, is the last uh, question I'll ask you. What do you and your students need to use Turnitin strategically and with confidence? So what's missing? And maybe we can work on that within this session. Throughout this session, you're going to learn some things that you didn't about the use of turning, especially about the similarity, similarity reports that are generated um, with Turnitin. So let us know here, what do you and your students need to use Turnitin strategically and with confidence within your institution? 
So if you're stemming from, uh, for example, the UE Jamaica, so please let us know what's missing uh, and what do you need uh, to, to start using it with confidence. And maybe we can tackle that today and you can kick, you can kick start this process within your institution. Any thoughts? I'm gonna give you another couple of, okay, okay. I'm assuming you're typing and it takes a while uh, uh, for, you know, for you to type the entire sentence. So, okay, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give you some time. Uh, better understanding of the tool. Yeah, in a general way, right? I'm assuming here. So we need to know the basics of using turning. That's why we're here for. That's what we're here for, definitely. More knowledge and info about the tool. Okay, so generally speaking, I need to be able to interpret the results from Turnitin. Uh, or to be fair, yeah, to be fair to students. That's that's a, that's really interesting to 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 see because uh, fairness is something that. Uh, is important and especially because you're talking to students in a formative way. So you have to be fair. You have to make sure you're not uh, you're not being too aggressive in your in your comments and you in your the way you play, face plagiarism because we're working uh, towards their their uh, understanding towards improving their understanding of academic integrity. So that's. Really interesting, and that kind of takes uh, takes us back to that question: What percentage of plagiarism is acceptable? When students are learning, you can assume some uh, extent of plagiarism will occur, right? So I can see some colleagues greeting each other there. Uh, really, uh, really interesting. Uh, zero is strange. Zero, zero is strange. Definitely, zero, zero is something. We, we can discuss, but let me read your comments here. So proper guidelines, understanding the technology. So you're talking about the technical aspects of the tool. Uh, yeah, so let's let's dig right in, guys. Uh, let's, let's do that. More info about the tool. Right, so I can see we're on the right path here. So without further ado, today we're going to be covering these topics. So, so we have uh, 45 minutes to go there. Um, Nice, Agnell, Agnell is telling us how to adequately use the grading tool. That's another aspect of Feedback Studio, right? So that Agnell is, tell, is telling us something about uh, something other that goes beyond the similarity report, which is the feedback features, right? So we have the feedback section on Feedback Studio. That's another chapter, but uh, if there's enough time, we can cover that today. Not in much detail because, of course, we have little time, but just so you can kickstart this process. So we're going to cover that. The difference between similarity and plagiarism. So we're going to talk about things, uh, something that Maxine is, is commenting on the chat. How does uh, turn it in? How do we detect similarity? Why is plagiarism a topic we care about at turn it in? What information does a similarity report give me? So what are those sources you, you, you can spot there? And how can I use this information to develop my students' writing skills? So let's go. Without, uh, I couldn't go any further without telling you that whatever we do at Turnitin, we are taking this into consideration. That underlies everything we do at Turnitin. Turnitin. Um, we want to promote academic integrity, which is by definition from the ECI or the International Center of Academic Integrity, is the commitment to six fundamental values of honesty, trust, justice, respect, responsibility, and courage, okay? So that's the uh, definition by the book. Uh, but when you think of a practical example, as a researcher, it is a personal endeavor a researcher strives to be trusted in his or her community. From the projects designed to publishing the results, the research practices should observe, observe shared ethical principles and academic integrity norms. So that's really important. That's a definition that I brought that uh, leads us into our daily activities as a researcher. Everyone that's within the university, so regardless if it's a lecturer or a student, 
we can consider ourselves researchers. So we're responsible for conducting uh, academic integrity, for bringing this into practice or putting this into practice. So we do not detect plagiarism per se. I'm not saying we don't. It's just that we detect similarity. So initially, what we're going to get from the reports are the similar sources within the documents. So it means we're going to scan your students' documents and contrast them, compare them to our repositories, which are huge. I'm going to mention some numbers here for you in a few seconds. But that's exactly what you're going to do. So within that similarity, there could be some plagiarism. But what's the very basic difference between plagiarism and similarity? According to the dictionary here, Merriam-Webster, uh, plagiarize means to steal and pass off ideas or words of another as our own, or to use another's production. So I'm kind of, like I said, I'm taking over someone's production and I'm saying, that's mine. So, but there's, there's a way you can do that, right? You might be thinking, okay, we do that all the time. We cite and citations are perfectly accept acceptable in any academic paper, right? They're almost mandatory, not only acceptable, but they're required. You have to have a certain amount of citations, but you cannot, there is a difference, right? So you cannot, for example, commit literary theft. You cannot present uh, as new and original uh, an idea or a product that's derived from an existing source without at least crediting the source, giving credit where, it's credit, it's, uh, where credit is due, right? So that's really important to take into account. How do we detect similarity? So we are the leading provider of academic integrity solutions. So we scan these documents and compare them to more than 1 million submissions per day. So we have billions of papers stored in our repository. That's going, they're going to be the, the um, uh, you know, the, the, the origin or the source of our comparison. So there is going to, they're going to be uh, the origin of this uh, comparison, the, the submissions and also the seven trillion phrases across our databases, including articles from the internet, articles that are online, articles that have gone offline. We can still track those because, they, because they're going to be stored within our repositories. 81 of the world's top 100 universities are part of our, of our repository. So you can, talk, you can think of UI, for example, and a good example here, if, if, there's, if there happens to be any other university here, just shout out. But yeah, UI definitely is part of our, our repository. 19 languages supported. So we're, we'll be scanning the internet, publications, papers, and also um, Crossref, so many things are going to contribute to your report there. Why do we care about plagiarism? So original thought, reliability of source, structured strategic communication, hard work, continuous learning, honesty. That's, uh, uh, these are our core values. These are things that we aim at as a company. Uh, moving for forward, 36% of undergraduates admit to paraphrasing. See there, paraphrasing, it, it's a sensitive topic. It's a hot topic. Copying few sentences from the internet without footnoting it. And they might do it not deliberately, but because they don't know uh, the rules. They don't know the, the format. They don't know the manual, right? 14% uh, of students admit to fabricate, fabricating or falsifying a bibliography, right? So that's a major sin whenever you publish anything. 7% self-report copying materials almost word for word verbatim. 7% uh, self-report turning in work done by another, maybe purchasing paper, so obtaining paper. 3%, only the 3% of students that uh, were in this poll here, 63 uh, under 1,000 undergraduates reported obtaining it from paper mills. So how do we prevent plagiarism? So let's go, let's, let's go there. So I'm going to show you now hands-on Turnitin Feedback Studio. 
And uh, right now I'm stop just to see if there are any doubts or any comments related to what we just said. Thanks for those of you who have joined. I see that we have uh, 27, 27 people with us. So um, yeah, we've been recording this session. So if you missed the, the very beginning, you can always refer back to it when we sent uh, the recording of the session. So not to worry, it's being recorded. What you can see here, okay, question. Carolyn, are there more recent stats on this post-pandemic? Oh, Carolyn is, is asking me here on private and uh, sorry, Carolyn, and just open it to everyone because this is a really interesting uh, interesting question. So it's been updated uh, at, uh, on a daily basis. We can say that right now we track uh, 30, uh, 320 billion, uh, yeah, 320 billion web domains, which means we have all these internet pages being tracked because right now everything is on the internet. So you have the, the repositories that are institutional, but they are published on the web. They are published via doc player or via script or uh, Cielo. So you have all these global repositories, right? Web of science, and they're ever growing, ever expanding. And that kind of what went overboard during the pandemic. So really academic production has increased. Of course, I don't know if you're talking about the stats that I've just shown about the research. Uh, there's, a res there's research that's just been published. Uh, I don't remember the link exactly, but, but it was published by Instructure. I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to put it here on the chat, on the chat. So it's in structure and you can, you can look for, um, I think it's a student poll, something like that. Um, okay, uh, Caroline is clarifying here. I meant about a set about students usage, usage of materials. Um, ESP I'm assuming is, um, uh, I don't know what that is. I'm assuming English uh, for specific purpose, purposes, especially, ah, oh, okay, sorry, the especially paid services. Ah, yeah. So um, about that, about that, that's a, that's a kind of misconduct. We don't have any specific statistics or I have to look up for statistics uh, that are sp specific on that topic, which is like, uh, paper paper uh, purchasing right so you're pick, purchasing papers from paper mills i would have to look it up and let you know uh later but it's really interesting it's really interesting um it's called contract cheating definitely um well okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna get back to here to to our platform here and i'm, I'm gonna uh, check the chat later on okay so what you can see here um and also you can put questions on the Q&A, just so you know you have this uh, tool as well available. Uh, what you can see here is Turnitin Feedback Studio from within your institution. So you must be located within an account. So uh, if you go to turnitin.com, you log in as an instructor, you're going to see something that kind of looks like what I'm showing you right now. You're gonna have your institutional account or sub account, but doesn't matter because it's it's a department, it's uh, it's the name of the institution. It can be anything like that, but you're going to be inside this environment, and inside this environment, you're going to be able to create uh, as many classes as you need to. So there is no class limit you can create classes and then within your environment, you're going to create your students roster, right? So I'm going to go to one of these classes here, which is linguistics. And I'm going to go straight to my English class assignment. Within the class, you have the opportunity to create assignments, right? So you create, first you create your class. Then inside your class, you're going to register your students on your roster here and of course it's very uh, user friendly and the user experience here is very easy so i want we don't have time to explore that in detail but you can register your students individually or via list you can upload the list where your students are going to be automatically registered uh, in bulk right so there are some ways to do it but uh 
Uh, before I go ahead, I have to clarify one thing. Okay, so for those of you, let me know right now uh, who here uses uh, via chat, uh, uh, turn it in via native, so you can answer uh, on the chat. Who here uses Turnitin via Turnitin.com and who here uses it via uh, integration with, for example, Moodle, so to say. Just so I can uh, show you the process of creating a task, I'm not talking about the similarity report because it's going to be the same, but just let me know if you, if you uh, operate via Moodle or integration via Moodle. So most of you, okay, in, in learning. So let's go, let's do the following here. I'm going to show you the process via Moodle. Uh, and then you can tell me uh, if, if you have any doubts on the native environment, if you, if you will. Okay, so I'm going to show you here it's via Moodle. Yeah, uh, so most people here use via Moodle. So I'm going to highlight uh, the process uh, with the Moodle integration. I think it's going to be better since we have uh, a very cohesive audience today. So uh, via Moodle, you might have something that look, looks like this. So uh, it depend, of course, depends on your Moodle environment. I'm not talking to, an, to a specific institution today, so it's an open session. So uh, let's just, since most people here are using, yeah, exactly like that. So thank you for confirming. So you would have to turn your editing on as a teacher and you would have to add an activity. So far, nothing new, right? So far, that's something you do on a daily basis. You would create your activity, you would create your assignment. So I'm going to choose assignment from all the options you have, especially because via Moodle, uh, usually for all Moodle versions, assignment is one that you can activate uh, Turnitin, right? So I'm going to select here assignment. And of course, I'm going to name my name my task here. So task uh, shared session. I'm going to put the same here just for time's sake. I'm going to leave the dates as they are. And I'm going to scroll down. And since you're using uh, Feedback Studio, you probably would have to activate the plagiarism plugin settings, right? So plagiarism plugin settings. And then what you have to do you would have to activate or enable Turnitin for your activity. Notice this as a standard, depending on your institution. Okay, so that's why I said take it a, if, with a grain of salt because it might look different. But depending on your institution, it might be it might not be activated for all activities. So we'd have to come here at the Turnitin plugin settings and activate Turnitin. And since you've done that. There are some uh, settings that you can change here. So to have uh, the activity the way you want it to be. So you can have, for example, the option, you can enable the option to display the reports to students if you want. You can change the, the, the file sub, uh, type of submission. You can choose either you're gonna store or not that paper, send it to repository. This is a very uh, interesting, uh, interesting and uh, important uh, feature. Because if you send it to repository, remember that you're going to have it sent to Turnitin's database. So that means that paper specifically is going to be indexed. So far, so good. For those of you who were saying, okay, I have Moodle, please go to Moodle. Are you, are you happy with this look right now? Is this the way you, are, are you familiar with that? Just let me know how it's, how it's going so far. I have something on the Q&A, so guys, let me just look here. Can you explain the turning repository? Yes, I can, I will do right now. So uh, setting up an assignment, we're asking to store or not. So I'm going to explain in detail. Yeah, thanks, Carolyn, thanks, uh, thanks, Katrina. So you're confirming it looks like that. So about the repository, um, I think uh, Agnel asked, uh, asked me. It's really important to uh, notice that the repository is uh, where we store all the papers that are submitted uh, at all institutions that use Turnitin. So you have the option, whenever you create a new task, 
uh, either you send it to the repository or you don't send it to the re repository. And there are reasons why you would want to send it to the repository. Reason number one, uh, you would want to send a paper to the repository when we want to spot students' collusion. The only way you can spot uh, students' collusion, or in other words, when students exchanged certain parts of their papers and they, you know, they um, reuse uh, papers that have already been published. So the only way you can spot that and prevent that from happening is by indexing it to the repository. So in most cases, you would want to send it to the repository because it's beneficial, because you're increasing our repository, because you are helping academic integrity in a broader sense, because you're indexing. And by doing that, other institutions might detect similarity. So let's assume, uh, let's assume a student in England uh, uh, found a paper from your university in the Caribbean and extracted uh, a part of it and inserted it into his or her paper. The only way that could happen is uh, it's provided you index it in the first place, right? So it's very important to understand what that means, this indexing or not. On the other hand, uh, so yeah, that's so. Th these are the two reasons, two main reasons why you would want to index the papers, right? Because you want to improve academic integrity. But there's another reason why uh, you wouldn't maybe, there's one reason why you wouldn't maybe uh, want to index it. And that's when you want to prevent overlapping of content. So let's say you would have three different versions of the same paper being handed over throughout the year from the same student. If you decide to index the first version of the paper, what would happen would be the second submission would overlap with the first one. So in order to prevent that, maybe for the first and for the second submissions, you wouldn't activate uh, the indexation here or in standard repository, it says. So maybe you would do that only for the final submission, right? So I hope, I'm hoping that clarifies it. Uh, please let me know if it didn't. And of course, you have other options here that I won't go through them because I want to go to the similarity report, of course. So Carolyn, let's get to the similarity report. So I'm going to go back here to my native environment. Let's assume you, you created uh, the task on Moodle. So I'm going to cancel this one here just for you to see how it looks. Uh, yeah, let me cancel this. So let's assume I have another... Uh, I have another... Uh, uh, let me find a good one here. Yeah, so this one, it, it's it's in Portuguese, but it doesn't matter. So you can see there's a there's a task. You can view the submissions in the task, and then you're going to have the report here. So you're going to have the percentage. If you click on the percentage, you're going to be taking exactly to the report itself. So let's move back to our native environment just to see how it looks. So um, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to uh, access this uh, similarity report here that shows 20% of similarity. So I'm going to enter, I'm going to click on it, and simply by clicking on it, a pop-up window will show on your screens, and there you're going to have uh, the similarity report. So we have some uh, time to cover that uh, in general, uh, in general manner. So the 20%, what does it mean? 20% means that the 20% of this text that was submitted by any given student, the one that I see right now, has 20% of similarity with sources within Turnitin. And all these sources, you can see them here. So we have this option that's kind of a downwards a funnel right? So in the middle of your similarity uh, block here, so the block in red, and you have this downward funnel here, and you can see all the sources that matched 
the document we're analyzing right now. So you can see there, they are not only uh, these block sources here, because you can see 21 in this document, at least one all the way to 26. Doesn't mean we have only 26 matches. No, we're grouping them down into blocks. So if you want to see the entire similarity, uh, uh, the, 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 the entirety of similarity sources, you can go to this factor here and you can see all of them. But what we did here, we grouped them down into matching similarities. So the similarities that are similar between themselves. Okay, so we're grouping them down into blocks. So it, it makes it easier for you lecturers to analyze the document. So I can see that uh, among these similarities, I have some uh, citations here. I have some, I might have some quotes. And of course, I do have small, small parts, small sentences. I do have many things that are uh, coded, so they're numbered, and they have colors on, uh, by them. So the colors uh, are only there to make it easier for you to navigate. So it makes it easier on, on you to find any information. So for example, I can see that this source here, let's focus on this one. This source that says number four, it's a quote, right? It's a citation. So since it's a direct citation, what can I do? I can go here, I can see on my, on my uh, similarity block here that it refers to something that was submitted to Rutgers University, New, New Brunswick. Nonetheless, I'm not able to see the content because submitted papers remain private. They're intellectual property of the institution. So if I wanted to access the contents, I would have to be part of New Brunswick University, which I'm not. So, but I can see there's a similarity going on, but I can see also that is a citation. So what I, what I can do given I interpret this as a citation, so it's not troublesome. What I can do now is I can select this source and I can exclude it by clicking here, exclude sources. So I can go below here. I have all these sources. So like I said before, we're grouping them down. So when we, when we see submitted to Rutgers University, I can see it has been also submitted to Nelson Mandela University, to Bloomsbury, to Coventry University. And, oh, look at this. It's already on the internet. So since it's the source on the internet, I could go ahead and click on it and then I'll be able to see its content. Why? Because it's on the internet. Whereas this one is private, so it's not going to be shown. So that's how it works. So we have all the sources and they're grouped down. And what I can do now, since I, I judged this, I, I, I deem this as a normal contribution. It's a, it's a citation. I can go ahead and exclude the sources and I can select but I'm going to select all of them because they're all similar between them, their selves. So I'm going to exclude them. There are 13 matching sources and surprise, I have 19% now because I removed the similarity that I considered it was not a problem. So I removed it. On the other hand, let's look at something that, uh, okay, this is the same case here, is a direct quote. Okay, not a problem. But uh, what if, let me find something that's not a direct quote here. Yeah, so what if there's this part here and it's not being cited? I don't see a source. So I can see there is a, a slightly large sentence here. Where does it come from? So this is the opportunity, this is source six, it's less than 1%, but this would be a good opportunity for me to give uh, feedback 
to my student and say, okay, you have to cite this. And how could I do that? With Turnitin Feedback Studio, you can benefit from this blue corner here. The blue corner gives you options related to feedback. We're not going to cover them in detail today since it's an introductory session, but see, see if you follow my steps here. So I'm looking at a sentence here. It doesn't have a direct quote. It has no, uh, it, it has no indication from the original source, right? So it's a problem. Let's say it's a problem. I, I consider this to be troublesome. So what I can do, I can come here and there's a section here called quick marks. And I can select from a wide range of ready-made post-it notes or uh, sticky notes that I can attach to the text that are really self-explanatory. So I can select a subset here. I can come and select the academic integrity subset of quick notes. Within the set, I'm going to find uh, add quotations, include original ideas, paraphrase ideas, and these, uh, here, is the, here is the interesting part. These are all filled with commentaries. So they have explanations. So let's say I'm talking about this, this quote right here. So I can say add quotation, add quotation, because I don't see quotation marks. And then there's an explanation. This section appears to be a quote from a source, but it's missing appropriate punctuation. Direct quotes, from, so it's formative. So it gives information. And if I want, I can even add a comment to that. But you're doing great. I don't know, it's just, uh, it's just something silly to say, but uh, yeah. So you can add your personal comments on top of the, of the quick marks that you have ready made. And you can stick that to any part, so you can associate the similarity report with the, with the quick marks. Another thing you might do, so let's say you have already analyzed the text, so you found all the direct quotes and you remove them because you thought they were not a problem. I'm gonna talk about uh, exclusion filters in a while. There is a way you can remove them in bulk as well. I'm, gonna, I'm going to show you, but let's say, you got to 19% uh, of similarity. You find that's a good, uh, your student did, did a good job. So you can send a comment that's voiced. So you can record a comment so that your student will know how you feel about, uh, about that. So your student you know will know how you feel about or what you think about the paper he, her has just sent and you can give instructions. So I'm gonna give you an example here. You press record button and then, okay, you're doing great, but pay attention to this. Uh, you forgot to mention this author. Don't forget, I, I, I told you to look it up on the blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, yada, yada, stop recording. And then you save recording. And the moment you do so, your student will be able to uh, listen to your comments, of course. So it's, it's very formative. Of course, you can type a comment in a more general sense here. So it's, it gives you a lot of power regarding uh, feedback, right? So let's say you're still analyzing the document and you want to remove the, the direct quotes because uh, you think they're not a problem. So in that case, you could go ahead here and select the exclusion filter that allows you to exclude quotes. And you can also exclude bibliography because as we know, let me scroll down a bit here. The bibliography section usually is filled with similarity because it's only natural. I'm going to use the same paper a student from other university has used. So uh, what I can do here I can exclude bibliography uh, in bulk. So you wouldn't have to exclude them manually as I showed you before. You can exclude them in bulk. So it makes it easier on you. And of course you can even say, you can even tell, turn it in or 
you can even consider for a specific document that you might be evaluating what's a small similarity that it's not, in your opinion, a problem. So I could even go ahead and say, okay, if it's under a one, I'm sorry, if it's under 1%, I won't consider uh, this similarity a problem. So you, you could select this and then apply changes. And let's see where it takes us. Oh, so we can see a lot of things have been removed because, uh, because yeah, because you decided for those filters, because you have to do them uh, uh, aware what you're doing of what you're doing. So you have to be aware. So you have to be conscious. It has to be a conscious effort, but you have this option. So you wouldn't have to delete the direct quotes, but nonetheless, it's always important to analyze documents to search for possible indications of plagiarism. I have a question here from Troy. Bruno, can you let us know which words would need to be listed for turn it into identified? Ah, good, good question, Troy. I think uh, there's a list, definitely, but the most common ones, so we're not tracking only for references, but also for, for, uh, for sources, these keywords, it has to be formatted in a way that it's, it's a section. So it's a title, right? So we'd be scanning for the section that has, yes, like, yes, those, those words, all these words. There's an exhaustive list. I think uh, I, I will send you a, a guide right now that you can retrieve information from this uh, the self-guide. So all of you can benefit from this self-guide. Of course, mind you, this is the guide for the website. I'm not considering the Moodle version. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to send you the recording of the session and on the recording, I'm going to include the Moodle tutorial as well, okay? But okay, this information you're going to find there, the, the exact words, but uh, works cited, references, bibliography, all these words are included. There are many more, there's a list. I just don't remember all of them. Uh, yeah, so you can remove them in bulk. And if you decide, for example, let's say I change my mind, you can always, refer back to the things that you have already excluded here on the forbidden sign, right? So we explored uh, all these sources and I can return them or restore them. And they're going to move back uh, to my uh, final paper here. Uh, and, I, and I can uh, change the filters whenever I feel like. So this is a work in progress, right? So you're streaming you're streamlining what you do with your student. But I'm, I'm gonna, I, there are two more things, two more very important things that I would like to cover for the rest of the session. One of them is uh, or are the red flags. The red flags are a, a very powerful tool that allows you uh, as an instructor to uh, spot misconduct. There are ways students, uh, uh, students, uh, want to trick Turnitin. So there are many ways they, they try to trick Turnitin and we are looking for those and we are going to keep track of them with the red flags. So we're looking for hidden text. So you can see here, any text that is shady, that it is, for example, in white. So students might want to hide the text because they want to enlarge their document. Because let me tell you something, the similarity you get is related to the size of your documents. So for example, let's assume you're a student who has already searched for ways to trick Turnitin on the internet. He found out that if he puts a lot of gibberish, lots, lots of words that make no sense in white in his text, it's going to reduce his similarity because the document is going to be larger Right, and it makes sense, it's only maths. But we're going to keep track of those attempts by, uh, by showing you the red flags. So we're looking for text, all text in white, that includes white quotation marks, because I don't know if you remember, but just a few minutes ago, we excluded quotation. And what? how do we do that? How do we exclude direct quotation? We're look, looking for block quotations, 
format. So we're talking about formatting here. We're talking about block quotations and also quotation marks, right? So your students might want to put white quotation marks and also another type of red flag for replaced characters. So I have a text, a, a, a text here with words, especially vowels from either Cyrillic alphabet or Greek alphabet. Your students will search for these words or for these letters and they replace the, for example, the letter A uh, from the Latin alphabet or the normal word. So let's say activity. And the student here will put an A that's from Cyrillic. And it's going to look the same, but we're going, we're going to help you by telling you, okay, there is a red flag with that, okay? So these are the red flags. So just be mindful of those. The students will have no access to the red flags. That's something only the instructor will see. So what you see here is, is exactly kind of the x-ray of the student's papers, okay? And... Um, Okay, so we, 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 we already checked all the documents. We found it to be okay, 7%, no plagiarism, 7% of valid contributions. So it's, it's all there. We don't have to get to zero because like I said, certain amount of similarity is always expected and desired, I, I, I dare say, but Let's say I've already assessed the document and now I want to grade the document. So that's the final part of our section. So I go back to the feedback sector here and I look for my evaluation rubrics. I know, I know, uh, believe me, lecturers who are here, this is a very complex topic. I won't cover it in, not even in detail. I'm going to talk very briefly about rubrics. We should have a special sex, uh, session only for rubrics. But for, for the sake of this presentation, I want you to know that the rubrics are here that the, and they are going to help you assess your students and they're, they're going to help your students understand their points of improvement, right? So for example, I can, I can assess my student here according to English language, mastery. So my criteria here were thesis, evidence, uh, and communication, and sophistication. And of course, I have information in detail. I have uh, degrees of grading. That's what rubrics are all about. But to keep it simple, I'm just going to randomly choose here a score, because let's assume I evaluate it. You can see four out of six, and I'm grading zero up to 100. So how do I tackle that? Simple. I apply this to the grade and it's going to calibrate to my final score. So it's going to show uh, exactly the score I need. So in general terms, that's what you can do, what you're aiming at doing with your students. So that's the idea here. Your students are going to get all the feedback via rubrics, via quick marks, via voice comments, and they're going to see how authentic, how original their texts are. So let me refrain from uh, presenting just for a moment and see if you have any questions. So I think we already answered one of your questions and uh, Katrina has a, has a comment here. So in my experience, one thing which often stresses out students about the similarity report is their surname and page numbers being flagged. Good, as this is required and by MLA. Is there anything that can be done about that? Katrina, watch this space. We're working on a beta version and, and Javier can confirm, can back me up on that, my, my colleague. We're working on a beta version for template exclusion for Feedback Studio. So as of today, there isn't exactly a way that you can prevent that similarity from happening. It's going to show and you, you have to ex exclude it because it's, it's not a problem. But in, uh, in a few, I, I won't promise anything, but in time, uh, in the future, in the near future, we're going to have the possibility to 
uh, set up a template for exclusion. So you can include all the headings and all the, the required information. So let's say your, yeah, your institutional uh, disclaimer or, and whatnot. Uh, right, so watch this space um, for that. Uh, good. Yes. Uh, any any other questions? So I marking it as done. So guys, uh, we our time is up. I wanted to know if you if you have any any other questions, please let me know. I would also love to hear from you what you uh, what you learned from this training session, your opinion in general. So I I'm gonna go ahead and share with you um, a form that you can uh, that you can refer to. And just let us know your, your general thoughts, if you learned something new, if I helped you out with, uh, with your, yeah, thank you. Uh, Georgie, I'm sorry if I'm, if I'm uh, not pronouncing your name right, but I'm trying my best. Thank you a lot for your presence. And if you have any other questions, I'll be around for another two minutes or so. Thanks, Sharon, for your comments. Very kind of you. Thanks, Leroy. Goodbye. Yes, you get the recording in 24 to 48 hours, okay? Along with the tutorials that I just mentioned. So uh, check your inboxes in a few uh, days. Thank you, Martha. Thank you, Agnell. Thanks, Deborah. It was great seeing you all here. Thanks, Maxine. So I appreciate your comments on, on, the, on the, the poll I just sent you. Thanks, Erica. Thanks, Katrina. Thanks, Maxine. Juanita, thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Katie Ann. Bye-bye. So since, it, yeah, recordings will also be posted. Oh, nice. Nice, Chrisanne. Very good. So Chrisanne is just letting me know as an, instruct, as an administrator here the, the, that you're going to be seeing the recording on your internal LMS training portal of Mona. Nice, nice. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Sharon. Bye-bye. Thanks, Nadik. Bye-bye. Bye, Justin. Thank you. Bye, guys. Have a, have a great weekend. Bye.